Lynette Zhang warns, the great Bitcoin crash coming 2018. Stocks. In 2018, the rally goes crazy. A Bitcoin flash crash briefly rattled cryptocurrency traders last night. Bitcoin lost more than $3,500 before quickly recovering. As of early this morning, the digital currency is back above $17,000. Speculators may have gobbled up this brief Bitcoin dip. But it isn't the last time we LLC wild price action in the crypto world. In fact, I think we're really going to experience an epic Bitcoin crash in the coming months. This brings us to my next wild prediction for 2018. Bitcoin will crash at some point in the next 12 months, losing at least half of its value. Make no mistake I don't think this crash will mark the end of Bitcoin. In fact, I think another hard reset for the digital currency has the potential to strengthen Bitcoin in the long term. To explain, we first need to break down Bitcoin mania to its core. It's safe to say that Bitcoin and other cryptos are in the Wild West phase all speculative assets go through as they mature. The rules and regulations are fuzzy. Rapid price appreciation has attracted scammers and hackers. For many investors who are just learning the Bitcoin basics, it feels like crypto outlaws are looking to rip off anyone to make a quick buck with prices moving so fast. Countless analysts and money managers are sounding the alarm. Naturally, investors who have witnessed the meteoric rise of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies have one big question on their minds. Are cryptocurrencies experiencing a massive speculative bubble right now? It certainly looks like it. But that is not necessarily a bad thing. All bull markets and manias eventually come to an end. And somewhere along the way, high-flying assets will get hit with a hard reset or two before consolidating and moving higher. So it is not that crazy to assume a major correction is on the way for Bitcoin. Just think back to the dot-com boom of the 1990s. Internet stocks were soaring higher every month. Companies would add dot-com to their name just to attract new investors much like we re seeing blockchain getting added to company names this year. In hindsight, the March 2000 market top is easy to see. But plenty of smart market analysts who saw trouble couldn't he get the timing right. Even Alan Greenspan delivered his famous irrational exuberant speech in late 1996, more than three years before the market top. It is also important to note that the best investments of the dot-com era have matured into some of the biggest, most profitable companies in the world. Amazon.com was a darling of the dot-com boom. So was Adobe Systems. And Microsoft. These companies thrived and minted millions for investors even after and during the popping of the 90s tech bubble. No one knows how much higher crypto can go from here. We can only assume we re somewhere in the middle of a massive bull run. As with all red hot investments, it can't go higher in a straight line forever. In fact, it has already shown speculators plenty of volatility during its run just this year. So far this year, Bitcoin has endured short-term plunges of 20% or more on three separate occasions, not including last night's flash crash. A bigger crash that effectively cuts the price of Bitcoin in half could convince some speculators to cash in their chips and give others a chance to accumulate on the dip. It might even kill off some of the 24-7 to media coverage that is fueling the mania right now. All these are good things for those who want to see Bitcoin succeed in the long run. I'll be the first to admit I was skeptic of Bitcoin as big rally this year. When I came across an article about a teenage Bitcoin millionaire who predicted Bitcoin would eventually hit $1 million over the summer, I knew we were in the middle of a massive speculative mania. A kid who is barely old enough to drive is offering up outrageous cryptocurrency price targets. To be fair, I still don't know if a crazy price target like a million bucks is possible. But if Bitcoin does continue its rump, we all experience plenty of volatility along the way. Bitcoin and its cryptocurrency cousins have made some forward-thinking investors a lot of money. We also can logically deduce that we re somewhere in the middle of a major cryptocurrency boom. That means that at some point in the future, the entire cryptocurrency market is going to have to start dealing with some growing pains. These growing pains could lead to wild price swings, hacks, attempts at government regulation you name it. And if my hunch is correct, we will see a big crash next year. It will be terrifying. But it might also offer up a massive opportunity for investors. Stocks in 2018, the rally goes crazy.
We're kicking off a wild week of stock market predictions in style today. Our first swing at a market forecast for 2018 begins with stocks. Specifically, I am talking about the S&P 500. Most serious analysts have already said they believe 2018 will be a decent year for equities. The predictions we've read so far peg the S&P's 2018 performance, between 5% 8%. Another average year for the averages but, that is not what I am seeing. Yes, I believe the major averages will finish in the green when 2018 ends. But I don't think we LL see the S&P, Dow Jones Industrial Average and Nasdaq Composite turn out wimpy, single digit gains. In fact, I see stocks finishing much, much higher. My first big prediction for 2018 is that the S&P 500 will finish higher by 20% or more, edging out this year's returns to post an incredible two-year run approaching gains of 50%. I know that might sound crazy especially since so many pundits and analysts are expecting stocks to cool off. But there are a couple of key facts about the current market rally that suggest we are still in the early phases of a melt-up move. First, it's important to note that prior to breaking out to new highs in late 2016, the S&P 500 endured a choppy, two-year stealth bear market that featured major sell-offs in speculative names such as biotech and small-cap stocks. The financial media loves to talk about how the major averages have enjoyed a massive bull run since the 2009 market bottom. One glance at this chart proves this is not the case. Stocks have not shot higher in a straight line for nine straight years. In fact, stocks have endured multiple pullbacks and corrections since 2009, including a drop of more than 19% in the S&P 500 during the summer of 2011, which apparently doesn't count as an official correction since it missed dipping 20% by the skin of its teeth. Furthermore, it's important to measure the beginning of bull markets from where the averages first break out to new all-time high. That didn't he happen until 2013 for the S&P. So much for the theory that the current secular bull market is long in the tooth. Still not convinced stocks have more room to run. Consider these key data points from LPL research S. Ryan Dietrich, including this year, the S&P has risen 20% or more 19 times. After each of these 20% rallies, the S&P was higher the very next year on 16 occasions, posting double-digit gains during 10 of those years. While there is no guarantee the S&P will repeat this year's performance, in 2018, it s wouldn't be an unprecedented market event. But there is a catch to my market melt-up prediction it won't be an easy ride. The S&P 500 hasn't experienced a 5% pullback in more than 13 months. Over the next year, I am guessing we will see at least two pullbacks of 5% or more. Each of these pullbacks will bring out new crash predictions, convincing some investors to cash out before the next leg higher. We might even see some short-term panic. But the market will eventually snap back and resume its ascent. The wall of worry will get a little steeper and the sold-out bulls will pile back into stocks. For the record, I don't care if I am wrong about my 2018 S&P prognostication. As I've explained countless times before, even the best market predictions are nothing but empty guesses. Mine are no different. Sure, I am using all the tools at my disposal to try to forecast what the market could do in 2018. But I am not delusional. Here is the bottom line, I can't control the stock market. No one can. I won't fight the tape if I am wrong. Instead, I'll change my outlook. That's the only way to survive as a trader period. We re just getting started with our bold 2018 forecasts. More market calls are on the way this week. Stay tuned.